Well, the word woke is all over our screens, all over the campaign trail, all over the news, but do people actually know what it means and where it started? How did it become a bad thing? The earliest usages of woke date back to the early 20th century and the idea of black people, quote, keeping their eyes open to the realities of white supremacist violence. Stay woke continued as a warning call until it started to enter mainstream and lose its original meaning. And the non-affirming ultra-religious crowd has now succeeded in making woke a bad negative term. But it's not. And it shouldn't be. And we want to help reclaim that. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I fell asleep. Now I'm woke. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Freed Hearts podcast. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I hope you are too still. My name is Robert Cottrell and I am awake and here as always with Susan Cottrell and I am awake too. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Again, connect with us, freedhearts.org. So glad you're here again. The word woke. Woke, 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 woke. It's all over our screens, uh, the the campaign trail, the news. But do people actually know what it means, actually, where it started? And how did it become a bad thing? So we want to talk to you today about, talk today with each other, and we're glad you're here with us, um, <laughs> about being woke. and. Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. sounds great. Um, thanks for your patience with my with my sound effects and early jokes. I appreciate it. It's, it's right. It's a running right dad joke. The, yeah, it's, it's a running dad joke. Um, because it's how I roll. Oh, <laughs> I roll. Um, okay, seriously. Well, I I didn't know this until until I started to look into it, and and I, I don't think you did. No, either. I didn't. But the earliest usages of woke date back to the early 20th century and the idea of black people, quote, keeping their eyes open to the realities of white supremacist violence. Wow. And quote, and the phrase stay woke continued as a warning call to other black Americans through the music. Um and and um people and, like Erica Badu. Right. And, and Childish Gambino. Right. And as a rallying cry through the Ferguson protest, it was always stay woke until it started to enter mainstream and lose its original meaning and was co-opted by the the religious right here with their own motives, um, which you know we've talked about this before. So yeah. Now this non-affirming ultra religious crowd. By co-opted, crowd, you mean gutted? Gutted. Yeah. yeah. Now this, you know, the this the ultra religious non-affirming crowd has succeeded to a point, I guess, uh, a pretty effective point at, at you know as of now in making woke a bad negative term. But you know what? I am proud to be a woke person because what's the opposite? Let's just let's just. This is so common sense to me. Mm-hmm. I I don't. I, I get I get frustrated. <laughs> What's the opposite of of woke, Susan? Asleep. 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 Yeah. But okay, here's where it's like, yeah, yeah, duh. They want us asleep here. That's where they want us to be. That's the state that they want us to stay in because we are asleep. It makes us asleep to the truth of their beliefs, of their agenda. And of what's really happening out there. Yes. So I love being awoke because I don't want to be asleep. And especially now with all the crap that's going on and the deceptive stuff, we need to stay awake with our eyes open and we need to keep our eyes open and stay awake, stay woke to what's going on out there. And, yes. and um, you had a story or, or uh, an example and analogy yeah. from G. Yeah. Well, first, let me say this. You know, we, we say we're woke. And we mean we mean that, but I also want to just say it in gratitude for the black community yeah. having come up with that phrase. And we don't mean to say it to 
uh, appropriate it to ourselves, these glib white people doing this stuff we do. That's an excellent point. But um, but we thank the black community for the origins and that it has expanded out into the culture in, that, that that is the term now that we understand to mean awake to the many injustices around us. Mm. Uh, we thank you for that origination uh, and, and we do not uh, like take it on lightly, but with deep respect yes. and gratitude to you who started this um, yeah. idea. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I want very much. So what I want to say is that Jesus came here from everything we read of him to wake people up, to wake religious people up, and especially religious leaders to say, you guys are are so far from the point here, so far from the truth. He was trying to wake them up. And now those of us who have actually heard him and woken up. Now it's it's derided by church people <laughs> as a bad thing. So Jesus said, wow. wake up. We said, oh, I'm awake now. And the church says, no, no, we don't like it. Go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and something else that that he said in a, in a, in a more tender voice is that, hey, wake up. Yes. Do, you, do you know how beautiful and beloved and perfect you yes. are as you are? Yes. You know, so yes. yeah. Yeah. Again, they they want to they want us to stay asleep. And when they say that wokeness is a left political ideology, they're not talking about anything. <laughs> they're just not they don't even yeah, it's say just what a generalized means. slur is right. what it is. They want they they say that so their listeners and followers will be afraid. Oh gosh, it's woke. I can't I can't listen. I can't support that. It, so, so what, I just kind of get frustrated. <laughs> I get frustrated because again, what is it? What is being woke? It's being aware. It's having your eyes open and it's standing against the us versus them narrative. Yes. yes. So what, let's look at what a woke person looks like. Okay. What does a woke person looks like? It looks like a person who reads books and doesn't ban them. Yes. Woke person embraces science, truth, facts. I, I, I went, oh. <laughs> I, you know, in, in this time Find of, your center. I'm trying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> uh, I, I need a nap. No, I need to stay awake. Um, <laughs> but in this time of, of alternative facts and alternative truth, science has become the enemy. And it's just, it just, it frustrates me so much. That just the absolute facts that that if you're if you embrace science and trust the truth and the facts, you're considered woke. Well, hallelujah. I'm woke. Mm-hmm. So we want to encourage you and give you some examples of what a woke person looks like. A woke person reads books and doesn't ban them. Ooh, that's great. What did uh Jordy, what's his name? The uh LeVar Burton say. You know, read the banned books. That's where the good stuff is. Amen. Yeah. It's so cool because with libraries now making the banned books available. Yes. Regardless if you're in their area. So that's right. Read the banned books. That's where the good stuff is. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Number two, woke people embrace science, truth, facts. That's cool. Truth and facts. Let's embrace them. Number three, woke people are willing to change our minds when new information becomes available. What? What do you know? (laughs) What an idea. What what a concept. Yeah. Number four, woke people understand the answers to most issues are somewhere in the middle. They're layered and nuanced, not binary. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the answer is... It takes takes more intelligence, honestly, and more awareness, more wokeness to understand the nuance. And that, that probably worries me more than anything sometimes is that is the fact that there doesn't seem to be a middle anymore you know and that's where the answers to most things are yeah but, but if you're woke you understand that most answers are in the middle yeah not binary yeah if you're woke you believe in true equality and inclusion for all people 
We should have a, a campaign that says race to the middle. <laughs> you know, they have race to the bottom. We, mm-hmm. Race to the middle. So again, I'm not sure how you stand against equality and inclusion, but for all but people, if you're right. a woke person, you believe in true equality and inclusion for all people. Yes. So number six. Yeah. Number six, a woke person cares for the marginalized and does not ignore negative impact on those communities. Yep. Number seven, a woke person embraces cooperation and community. Yes, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Number eight, a woke person respects other people's rights. They're not an us versus them mentality. Number nine, a woke person believes that culture and the arts have value. Yes. That's where that's where all the creativity, that's where all the... the good stuff is. <laughs> that's where all the good stuff is. That's right. And, and one number more. 10, a woke person cares for the planet. It's the only place yeah. we have to live. So all those things, and again, you know, rewind and listen to them again. But does that sound like a, something, a way you want to be? Things yes. you want to embrace, then yes. beloved, you're woke and hallelujah, we're right there with you. Yeah. But you know, there woke is not the only word. There are some other words out there that have been co-opted and used and changed and, and gutted and things like pride and the concept of self-love. We talked about that recently and inclusion and diversity and science and critical race theories. All these things are bad and wrong. And what according to that the co-opted right, version yeah. right but other terms like uh, nationalism um, fascism is- isolationism white supremacy are are almost becoming more acceptable in yeah. this in this crazy world out there and it seems it seems to me that but it don't, it's only in that arena and they are they're seeking to spread it out into the world as much as possible. That's a good point. But there's so many more of us, so many more of us who don't see it the way the religious right sees it. And the more we continue to stand up and speak up and defend yeah. each other and and cross arms together, the the better off we are. There, you know, we, we get to speak. Yeah, and and that's an encouragement out there to you, beloved. It's not the vast majority of people are woke. Yeah, the yeah. vast majority of people are okay <laughs> with with all this, but this this uh, loud minority of folks um, have kind of taken the microphone right now. Um, you know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but there are a lot of mics, and we yeah. we all yep. get to step up. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. I get discouraged, I get frustrated, and I you encourage do. myself, and I encourage you. Don't you know? I I mean, do what I we have to do. I don't want to give away my people. power to them. Absolutely, it it, it 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 feels draining on my power to give them more than their due in in their impact. I know they. I know they're hurting people. Yes, I absolutely. don't mean to minimize that at all. But I don't want to empower them yeah. with our words and our thoughts about them. Yeah. We we speak up and do the things we can do, help each other the way yeah. we can. Yeah. You know, Ugh. that's excellent. Um, thank you for saying that. Mm-hmm. But these as I look at these terms, the terms that have the really good, wonderful things that have been co-opted by by the ultra-religious right to be bad in terms that they seem to embrace that should be bad, but they, they're not to them. And it seems like there's kind of a common factor mm-hmm. in this, in that things that increase the us versus them narrative are accepted. They accept. Mm-hmm. And anything that increases diversity and inclusion is denied by them and labeled as bad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And one example of that and a big one out there is critical race theory. And you can now like the term woke, you can now say that and they they have gotten it to a point at least for their audience where or those who are uninformed who who just think, "Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Critical race theory is yeah. is, is is bad." We could do a whole episode on that, I think. <laughs> yep. And how it's been co-opted and turned it into something. I, 
you know, what is it? What, how has it been turned into this? Because what is it? It's just a discussion about race. Yeah. It's an honest look, an honest look at the treatment of non-white people in this country. It's just facts. Yeah. But if we can label it, if they can label it as bad and left and woke, then they can dismiss and ignore the facts and truth about what happened. And what's still happening. Yes. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. And yes. every it seems that every kind of discussion about race is now being termed critical race theory. Mm-hmm. Every discussion about diversity and inclusion is 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 being labeled as woke. You know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. uh, okay. I want to try to stay positive here. I really do. <laughs> you yeah. know, do you have something else you look like? No, you're just, we, you know, the empowerment is to speak truth, to continue to speak truth, you know, and, and be the love we want to see in the world, mm-hmm. be the truth we want to see in the world, because that has power. And I heard somebody, I've heard it, several different ways and different times to say that one person who is in touch with their divine spark has more impact than millions who are not. Amen. And I, I believe that, that, that we connect with our divine humanity, our divine connection to all that is to God, the universe, and spirit and and live into that yeah we have more impact more power than the millions who are still asleep yeah and so <laughs> don't let the the sleeping people the zombies they're z- zombies in the way they've been conditioned mm-hmm. in their thinking don't let them distract you from your divine mission to love and be loved on this planet. It's what you came for. It's what I came for. And so don't let that shut you down. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Cause we, you know, we have it beloved. We have each other and we have the truth and we have history and we have loving ourselves and things like inclusion and acceptance and diversity and and science and all these things on our side. Yes. We have love on our side. And I believe in the end, love wins. I do yes. believe that. Yes. So what can we do? We can stay woke. We yes. can stay woke. We can stay alert. We can stay awake. We can trust that love is greater than any hate. Yes. And this is not a bumper sticker. I believe this. We can trust that in the end, Truth is usually exposed here. These people are exposed. Yeah. You know, and and, and it's their their death cry. Excuse me for interrupting. Yeah, no, go ahead. It's their, you know, just before you die, <laughs> you have death cries. And it's their death cry that that they're so desperate to squash everything they can that comes against their grip on their piece of power. So it, it, their attack, their ad hominem attacks, meaning they're attacking us as people rather than the ideas fairly and justly. It, it, it's an indication mm. that we are moving forward. There's not been a time, I keep hearing this, there's not been a time in history where we have been more forward motion with humanity and, and who we are as human beings. And so keep hold of that yes, and don't let what you see with your physical eyes scare you into yeah. silence and depression right. and hopelessness because those are all false. And we know, and we acknowledge, I mean, the threats are real. They're daily for so many families. Yes. I know many are listening to this podcast. We know that yes. we're not diminishing that in any way. No, but all we're saying the antidote though, right. Is hope. Right. And love yep. and your voice. To, to join together, to stay awake, to do what we can do. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, you were yeah. great. To, to, to stay awake, to do what we need to do, what we can do, do it together. Know that we're not alone. Look around you, beloved. Be kind to other people. Be kind to yourself. Be there for people. I'm hopeful 
I am hopeful. That doesn't mean that I believe everything is just going to be okay. Yeah. It means that I believe I can do something to make a difference to make things better. That's what being hopeful is to me. Yes. So be hopeful, beloved. Stay woke. We're right there with you. We love you. We love you so much. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? You've been listening to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We have extensive resources and vibrant community for you at www.freedhearts.org. Just come say hello. And if you have questions or issues or comments about the podcast, things you'd like us to talk about, reach out to us at podcast at freedhearts.org. The music is provided by Hannah Cottrell, our daughter, the Grammy-nominated Saint Sinner. And you can find out more about her at Hey Saint Sinner. Dot com. Please share this, subscribe, and follow on your favorite platform. And thanks for listening.